The mission of the Abundant Harvest is to create experiences around the table that feed the body, nourish the soul, and transform the community. The mission of the Abundant Harvest by St. Isidore Episcopal Church is to feed the body, nourish the soul, and transform the community. And we do that primarily through giving away food from the Abundant Harvest kitchen through our food pantry. The mission statement for the Abundant Harvest is to, to create experiences around the table that feed the body, nourish the soul, and transform our community. And how we do that is we take food that grocery stores can no longer sell and upcycle it to have big community meals and also that are free for the community and also to run a food pantry. The idea for the Abundant Harvest started out as just a joke. I had been in culinary school while at the same time doing full-time ministry and we would joke around in the office how wouldn't it be funny if we had a food truck and we could combine somehow church and the food truck and have a taco kind of church and taco truck church. And we laughed about it for like three or four years and it was just a big joke. We were never going to do it. And then we had a young new priest join us and he heard us joking around one day and said, I love that idea. I'm, I'm going to build a whole church based around a food truck. And I laughed at him and I said, okay, okay, Mr. Big Shot, when you get $100,000 raised for the food truck, let me know and I'll come be the chef for the food truck. And about a year went by and sure enough, he came back to me and said, hey Molly, I've raised the money and I'm ready to start the church based on a food truck. And so that's kind of the beginning of the Abundant Harvest. The idea of the Abundant Harvest came from St. Isidore Episcopal Church and our vicar Sean Steele and Molly Carr, our kitchen pastor and executive chef. And it started with the Abundant Harvest food truck that served families during Hurricane Harvey and then developed into the idea for a brick and mortar location, which is now here, the Abundant Harvest Kitchen, which is a social enterprise to serve the community and serve as a gathering space for people to come in and find sanctuary from the world, take a load off, get a cup of coffee, get a meal, and join other like-minded people in the community and other church members as well. Harvest came directly from the gospel that the harvest is abundant uh, and that there is enough for people. And so when we wanted to, we started dreaming about planting a church in the world, uh, we thought what would be a better icon than uh, a food truck? Uh, we wanted to gather people around food uh, because food denotes safety, it denotes nourishment, it denotes family. Uh, there's so many things that we associate with food and feeding. And we started about six months before uh, Hurricane Harvey hit. And at that point, um, we really blew up in the community and the community support that we received as we were able to take food to families who had been devastated by the flood. And um, the amount of volunteers grew, the amount of donations grew, our, our respect and uh, credibility in the community grew as they saw that we could really um, make a difference through using this donated food in multiple different ways. And we continued on that growth pattern, really kind of digging into certain communities, um, making sure that we returned again and again so we weren't just dropping off food and people being in number, but they were getting to know us, we were getting to know them. The first stages of the Abundant Harvest started last summer, in the summer of 2019. We were looking for a space to house St. Isidore Episcopal Church and also the social enterprise of the Abundant Harvest Kitchen. So we canvassed the area around Montgomery County looking for a space that would meet our needs and would also fit with our two-year proof of concept grant from the Episcopal Church, so a lease to buy option. And we found this building, the former Transtar AC Supply Warehouse at 24803 Oakhurst Drive. And we signed a two-year lease with an option to buy beginning in September of 2019. And we quickly formed a building committee to <clears throat> look at what it would take to remodel the space. We hired an architect and an engineer, drew up plans, went through the permitting process, and started construction on December 9th. And from December 9th until the end of March, we worked every day except Sunday 
and Christmas holiday and New Year's on construction to remodel this 8,000 square foot warehouse, taking the finished space from 2,500 square feet to half the space, 4,000 square feet, and then leaving the back warehouse space open where you'll see Warrior Church and what's now our food pantry during the pandemic. So after construction, we got all of our final approvals from the county and the health department, and we were actually able to open ahead of schedule at the end of March, just in time to start feeding people during the coronavirus pandemic. The Abundant Harvest Kitchen uh, came out of uh, a dream that we had back in 2018, um, early 2018 where we thought, where, where is the church going? Where is this ministry going? And we knew that to, to keep doing what we were called to do, we needed to have a space that we could feed and create jobs and to gather people. And not, not a sanctuary, but an icon, a hearth for the community, a place where people knew the values that were behind St. Isidore, where people felt comfortable, they knew they could come and, and they could get fed and they could find community, um, that they could find hope. And so, um, that's where it started. It started with casting a vision about what is it that our community needs. And our community, if you look hard enough, you're gonna find food. You're gonna find food. There's lots of people that are giving you food. But this kitchen is supposed to be a place, it's designed to be a place where people find more than food. They find hope, they find community, they find nourishment. An example of that is Laundry Love, where um, the church gathers um, and does a thousand loads of laundry for free for members of the community and at the same time the food truck is there and we're preparing brunch and lunch for everyone who's sitting around waiting for their laundry to be done. We partnered with one of the local hospitals and they sent out doctors and nurses to be able to do wellness checks. We partnered with another nonprofit that gives out free haircuts and had free haircuts for everyone who was there. We offered free childcare um, and it really grew into this community that, that looked forward to and gathered every month to be around the table while they're watching the laundry spin and uh, that was that was the whole idea of how we were going to be in the community and and as that continued to grow we began to notice you know the food truck is great but we don't have a home base right now um, we have we're renting a kitchen over here to do our prep kitchen work at we have the truck stored over here and we're meeting in seven different locations and we decided we really needed a home base. So they um, began the search and it took about a year to find a property that would work for us. And um, then once we found the property, it needed about a quarter of a million dollars in um, restoration and, and able to get it up to code and up to what we needed it to be. And so four or five months after we took possession of it, we built this new Abundant Harvest Kitchen, which is an 8,000 square foot area that allows us to have a coffee shop that welcomes in the community and a cafe that offers a free meal every weekday. Um, there's also a food pantry here and it is a place for not only the church to gather but the entire community to gather. At the Abundant Harvest, we rely on a team of dedicated volunteers. We probably have between 20 and 30 regular volunteers here at the kitchen and at our mobile pantries and they're the lifeblood of the organization. They're responsible for packing up all the boxes that we use to give families in need and actually delivering those boxes to the cars, receiving shipments from the food bank, sorting it all up, and then running our mobile pantry sites. So if you want to volunteer, you can sign up at harvestkitchen.org. We need volunteers. Even with our dedicated team of volunteers, we can always use more volunteers. Um, and that's because we give food to about about 1,200 people per week, and that's almost 300 families. We serve 60 families per day, 50 through appointments, and another 10 to 15 through a no appointment drive through pantry here at the kitchen. And then we serve even more families through our off site mobile pantry. So when God has showed us the need, we've stepped up and responded to it, and a lot of that is due to our volunteers. The food comes from a few different places. Uh, it comes from local grocery store partnerships. So every day grocery stores have to sort out food that they find unsaleable. 
And so they need people to take that food. And so we have partnered with multiple grocery stores where we pick up food in the morning, we bring it here to our facility, we sort out the rotten food, the food that people wouldn't buy. Uh, we don't want to give people food that we wouldn't buy ourselves because we want to offer them dignity. Um, and then we also, uh, recently with the pandemic, we have partnered with the Montgomery County Food Bank and so we buy food at a heavily subsidized rate, thanks be to God, um, from them so that we can distribute it to the families that, that come to the kitchen and for all of our mobile pantries as well. One of the most important things we've learned um, as we've begun to do this work is how much we need the partnerships of other entities within our community. So for instance, we like to partner with, uh, we have a food truck, so we partnered with the garage and so we have our mechanical work being able to be done um, when we need help with the vehicles. We partnered with the laundromat to be able to take over a laundromat for a whole year. We partnered with other nonprofits like Texas Familias to be able to work more into the Hispanic community. We've partnered with other churches, whether that's other Episcopal churches or other other churches. We partnered with a number of churches in the Magnolia and Woodlands and Spring areas to be able to um, share resources and make us all stronger. We've partnered with the Montgomery County Food Bank. We've partnered with Keep Us Fed Montgomery County. These are both nonprofits that allow us to get in some of the food that we're able to share um, with meals and with groceries. And I, I think it's really important um, with any nonprofits that they work together so that um, instead of trying to work against each other, we're working together to create the greater good for the community. Uh, St. Isidore Episcopal Church and the Abundant Harvest Kitchen have a, a symbiotic relationship. They, they exist because of each other. So the Abundant Harvest Kitchen was launched out of the resources from St. Isidore, and in doing so, it became a gathering point for all of the St. Isidore missional communities. And so they're really, uh, they operate sort of separately, but at the same time, they are one and the same. And so the future for them is to continue that symbiotic relationship where people know that, that what we are about is, is caring for people and that we're doing that because of the love that we've experienced in Jesus Christ. Um, that we're doing that out of our Christian values and our belief in Christian economy. Um, that being said, we also want people to know that this isn't oppressive, that regardless of who you are, your faith, your background, um, you can come here and you can find community, you can find food, you can find hope, you can find love, you can find acceptance, that your story matters here. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's constant balance, uh, but we're hoping that, that people recognize that this is a place that you can bring your full self one of the great things that I love about um, the work that I'm doing is as a person of faith, I, have it, I find it completely integrated into what we believe. The, the community of St. Isidore Episcopal Church was born out of a larger church with uh, this young priest who had an idea of doing church a different way, but an ancient way. And he, and he began the community of St. Isidore and, and that was around for about a year meeting and growing and becoming a part of the community before the food truck um, came online and then once the food come, truck came online that's when I got involved and um, so I haven't been here since the very beginning but I've been here since year two and I've I've seen the community grow I've seen it not only grow in in the church side of it but also people of all faiths and people of no faith coming together around the idea of wanting to make this community transformed into a different kind of place. And to that we have hundreds of volunteers who, who are able to make all of this work. We have um, other churches, other Christian churches who join us, whose youth groups come and, and work on the truck or work in the kitchen. We have people of other faith. I have a, a group of women who are um, Muslim and uh, Jewish, and they meet and work together to try and bring those two communities some understanding together. We've worked with the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints in uh, crisis relief work, 
and um, we really love the idea of it doesn't matter who you are it matters that you want to make your community a better place you want to give back you want to bring together people not tear people apart and in our world that is becoming more and more polarized I think it's the idea that we have this commonality of coming around the table. We all get hungry. We all want good food and we don't want to eat alone. That, that this idea of bringing people together um, around the table is something that resonates with all people, whether you're different ages, races, ethnic groups, uh, faith traditions, no faith traditions. It's a commonality that brings us all together. Now we're in the middle of the Corona COVID-19 pandemic, and we were able to take this building and transform it into a huge food pantry that is giving out over 35,000 pounds of groceries a week to hundreds of families and thousands of people. And at the same time, providing them not just with the groceries, that have been chosen especially for their families but also a home-cooked meal that they can take straight home and put into the oven and have for dinner that night so we're still hoping to try and build the community but just doing it in a different way during this crisis and then once this crisis is open we'll be back open as a cafe and a coffee shop and we're looking forward to that part too so the abundant harvest opened right at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic in fact when we went through our final inspection and our health department inspection, it was right when the stay home order was issued from the Montgomery County judge. So we were concerned about even getting inspected and getting open, but God blessed us with good timing. We were able to open up just before the pandemic. And as an essential business serving the community who's underserved and also serving food products, we were able to stay open due to our essential nature during the pandemic. And the first day we were open, we started handing out boxes of food and word quickly spread through the community. And in the second week we were open, we had tens of families per day coming to walk through the pantry and pick out their own boxes of food. Um, but through paying attention to CDC guidelines and local guidelines, we quickly realized that having people actually walk through the pantry probably wasn't the best way to keep everyone safe. So instead of taking the temperature and sanitizing and asking all the, all, all the compliance questions of everybody who was a pantry visitor, we have that process in place for our volunteers to come in and sanitize and stay safe, make sure they're not sick. And we have our pantry visitors pull up for curbside contactless delivery. So now our pantry visitors submit pantry requests through Sign Up Genius. They make an appointment, pick a time, give us all the information that we need to know to make a special box just for their family. Even special requests for baby food, diapers. We've had requests for parakeet food, dogs, cats, fish. You name it, we fill all kinds of special requests through the online Sign Up Genius request system. And so we take 48 appointments per day. They fill up a week ahead of time. And so every day we have 48 families come to the pantry with appointments and put specially made orders into their car um, through our curbside delivery system. I mean, our first challenge was just getting it open. I mean, we, we really opened just a few days before um, the pandemic really uh, became big and then they put in the lockdown order for everybody to stay at home order and so we had only been open for for a couple of days we got all of our permitting our health permitting our fire permitting and so that was a challenge was just getting it up and going and then having not really used the facility how do all of a sudden we start taking thousands and thousands of pounds of food a week uh, from the food bank and getting enough volunteers having them go through the right protocols, making sure that we're using all of the best practices from the CDC as far as uh, wearing masks, as far as physical distancing, hand washing, sanitizing. And so the biggest challenge for us has been getting um, a number of volunteers. I mean, there have been days where there's only three of us here and we have 10,000 pounds of food in the back to sort and deliver out to all the people that are coming. The Abundant Harvest has had its number of successes and, and the, the feeding of people and the amount of groceries and the tons and tons of food we've been able to give away are all successes. The uh, amount of relationships that we built are even larger successes. But with all that comes its challenges also. And 
the challenges we have are those of any small business, of any nonprofit, is that are we able to make this sustainable? Are we doing the work we need to do to financially be able to make this happen? Um, we're also hugely volunteer based. Are we doing the work not only to draw volunteers in, but also to um, get them connected and to um, let them know that they are valued and uh, the work they're doing is worthy of their time. Um, those are all challenges we face. Um, the other challenges we face are, is it's, it's, a, it's a new world out there and, and we don't know what the world's going to look like as we go forward and so how can we remain steady in what we want to do but also nimble enough to be able to pivot to whatever the next thing is going to be for us. Some of the challenges that the Abundant Harvest has had to overcome during the pandemic is the lack of volunteer horsepower to run the food pantry and run our organization. It's a scary time that we're living in and a lot of people want to stay home and stay safe under the stay home orders. Um, and we recognize that people don't want to be out and about and coming in contact with other people during the pandemic and we're okay with that. We do still rely on volunteer help to run the pantry so some of our dedicated volunteers who want to come help are not allowed to because of age and, and other types of restrictions. So getting volunteer help has been a big, big challenge for us but we've seen the community really step up and a lot of new volunteers show up at the kitchen and help us out during the pandemic. Uh, the other challenge that we faced is funding. Um, we purchased food from the Montgomery County Food Bank at a significant subsidy. So we pay uh, very little for the food that we get, but we do still pay rent on the building. Uh, we pay for our food. Uh, we have overhead costs as well. And so fundraising and selling food during the pandemic um, is something we haven't been able to do very much of. Fundraising has played a part in keeping our operations going but running the coffee shop, cafe, selling meals to go, doing catering and renting out the space that we have here is something uh, that has slowed almost to a halt during the pandemic because people can't go visit um, retail stores. So what does the future hold for us? I wish that I could give like, this is exactly, these are our goals, these are our metrics that we have, but we don't have those. What we do have is, is this, this idea, this vision, that, that we see people who are different, who have different ideas, um, who live different kinds of lives, who look different, coming together around a table and finding the commonality that we all have as people. And then being able to transfer that from that dinner table to the larger community so that can they begin to see not only the differences that we have but with their neighbors in their community in their homes will they be able to find those commonalities even if you have different um, political signs in your lawn can you still work together as as people who who need each other and who are interconnected in ways that we don't even understand. The other thing that I really hope um, we have as we go forward is the ability to see where the needs are in our community and then be able to fill those niches, whether that's um, in union with other nonprofits and other businesses that are out there or um, just finding a way to we all are a way in that we are allowed to to find those people who are on the edges and bring them into the greater community also so the future of the abundant harvest is a place where people can come in get a cup of coffee and get a meal in our cafe where chefs can rent out our commercial kitchen to cook meals um, and even sell their food online through ghost kitchens. We're renting out our kitchen space. We're renting out our cafe as well for events. 
We're renting out this room right here, the conference room for people who need meeting space. Um, next door to us is a lounge for youth Bible study and other small group meetings. Also a place for moms to kick their feet up and have a cup of coffee and watch their kids play in the kids zone, which is also next door. Um, we have some private offices for our staff. And then in the back in the warehouse space, we have the Warrior Church Gym, where we'll be having Warrior Church, which is one of our communities combining faith and fitness every Sunday. And we also have the warehouse space, which is a bigger space for the church to gather uh, during times in need. I mean, the future for the Abundant Harvest is the same for the future of St. Isidore, is that we become known in the community as a place where people can come and they can find a meal for their body, they can find nourishment for their soul, and that they can, they can believe they can be transformed, that they can have a hopeful future, that they can live into something that is beautiful, and that they can find a group of people that are willing to walk with them and be with them. We want to always communicate um, in everything that we do that there's enough. We say offensively generous all the time, and that's how we understand grace. And so when people come here, I want them to know that this is a place where they will be offended with our generosity, and that in some way that's going to help them understand a God who we believe was offensively generous in, in, in giving us his son. And so the future is that this becomes a place known in the community for hope, for dignity, uh, for feeding, uh, for care, uh, and for community.